Hi guys, Nada here from Tech Testers and today I'm going to talk about the two brand new graphics cards from AMD, the Radeon RX 5700 and the Radeon RX 5700 XT. So they're supposed to compete with the RTX 2060 and the RTX 2070. And today was supposed to be a great day for AMD because they are releasing their new CPUs as well as these two graphics cards. But you notice a little past tense there because a uh, big green giant came out a few days ago and released the new RTX super cards. Now, they might have crashed AMD's party a bit, but I do think AMD was ready and had a little answer to this surprise in terms of pricing, which I'm going to talk about a bit later. So, I'm not going to get too technical and go too much into architecture of these cards, but I'm going to go straight to the point and talk a bit about how they perform in gaming, uh, what are the thermals and noise production and power consumption, and all those little fun graphs that everybody loves. So, let's dig in. Are most mice just too small for you? Then check out Corsair's new Ironclaw RGB wireless gaming mouse. It offers an ergonomic shape that fills larger hands nicely, a top optical sensor, fast wireless performance, and is not expensive either. Check it out using the links in the description below. From a design perspective, AMD really didn't do anything too different from what they did before. The new RX 5700 reference model definitely carries more weight and is now largely metal instead of using more plastic materials. Yeah, but we all know that these blower style coolers are usually only better in some specific scenarios, mostly some ITX cases or cases where airflow is really limited. There is no backplate, unfortunately, but I suppose most people will buy a third-party solution anyway, where I expect to see plenty of fancier designs. For the XT, they did try to do something a bit different, although the responses around the office here on dent to design have been fairly mixed. The dent makes it easier to hold the GPU for sure, and it gives it something unique to look back on later. But again, I somehow think most of you will buy a third-party model anyways, and it is hard to disagree with people that just say it looks like I just dropped a card. I'm gonna talk about the performance of these designs in a bit, but first I'm gonna cover what most of you actually care about, and that is gaming. How will your games run with these two graphics cards? Now, AMD had one thing in mind when they uh, came up with these, and that is beat the RTX 2060 and beat the RTX 2070. And as you guys will see in these test results, the reference RTX RX 5700 XT is actually just beating the RTX 2070 Founders Edition. Not by a huge margin, but it is better. In some games, the RTX 2070 is still ahead, but on average, AMD's reference card takes the win. And that's where the new RTX Super Cards comes into play. Now, Nvidia didn't make a huge jump with their Super Cards, but it was enough to just edge out AMD's RX 5700 XT again in most benchmarks. But the gap between the RTX 2060 and the RX 5700, however, is much larger, with AMD comfortably taking the lead here. If you only care about one specific game, it is actually worth checking the benchmarks, but in general, the RX 5700 looks a lot better than the RTX 2060, both as the great Full HD card for AAA games, as well as the entry Quad HD card. Now, Nvidia did really make a big jump forward with their new RTX 2060 Super card from the old model, and they had to do that in order to stay ahead. Keep in mind that while the 2070 Super replaces the 2070 completely, and the 2070 is going to be discontinued, Nvidia will continue selling the 2060 as well as the 2060 Super, so both results here are relevant. But what about AMD's traditional weakness, which is power consumption? I'm actually quite happy to see that for the first time in a long time, AMD is able to really compete here. Nvidia's RTX 2070 Super is still a bit more efficient than the RX 5700 XT, but the RX 5700 uses as much power as the slower RTX 2060. And RTX 2060 Super, which is only marginally faster, uses a tiny bit more. Now, these are not huge differences, but that alone means that AMD really has made big steps here. 
it is fair to say we've come to the point where we can consider these cards very competitive when it comes to power draw. Now the only problem I have with the AMD choice here is the cooler because when we put the AMD's reference design against Nvidia's Founders Edition with the two cards that use exactly as much power, we can see Nvidia's new design staying significantly cooler at a slightly lower noise level. Now sure, you're probably gonna buy a third-party card anyways, but it's a missed opportunity for AMD to actually build a design that people really want, looks really good, and is actually efficient. But there's a bit more to a GPU choice uh, than just these raw benchmark results. So for example, the Nvidia cards have ray tracing, which AMD cards don't have, even though only a handful of games uh, support it so far. But the thing about Nvidia is that it has a great GPU encoding, so it's very good for streamers, especially those uh, wannabe starting streamers that don't have a high-end processor yet. AMD cards, on the other hand, have uh, their new anti-lag technology, which is supposed to bring the image to your screen a bit faster, and in theory is supposed to be better for competitive gaming. And they also have improved upscaling, which is supposed to compete with Nvidia DLSS. Now, this is all in theory so far, I personally didn't have time to test that yet and we'll have to come back to that in the future. As our test results started coming in, I was actually very excited about these new AMD cards because they were on one hand faster and on the other hand quite competitive when it comes to power consumption. But then Nvidia did what we all expected it to do and tried to kill these cards before they even had a chance to launch. But as we started preparing this video, we actually got a very nice press release from AMD. I'm gonna quote. Competition is heating up in the GPU market. We embrace competition, which drives innovation to the benefit of gamers. In that spirit, we are updating the pricing of our Radeon RX 5700 series graphics cards. And that is why competition is super healthy for the market, because AMD pushed Nvidia to release better products, while Nvidia pushed AMD to release these cards at a much lower price. Now, I don't know if that was AMD's plan all along or not, but at the end of the day, who cares? This is better for the end user. At these new prices, the AMD cards are looking very good. So the RX 5700 costs as much as the RTX 2060, while having better performance and using the same amount of power. And the 2060 Super is a bit of a hard bargain now because it costs 100 euros more. So for that uh, ultimate Full HD gaming or entry-level Quad HD gaming, the RX 5700 is an extremely good option. At the same time, the RX 5700 XT is going to cost the same as the RTX 2060 Super, while having the performance very close to an RTX 2070 Super. Now, the 2070 is still going to be a slight upgrade, especially for streamers, but it is going to cost 100 euros more. So that leaves the RX 5700 XT an excellent option for the Quad HD gaming for people on a budget. So overall, I would have to say that today is a great day for anyone that is looking to buy a graphics card with all this excitement and competition in the market. Now, I personally cannot wait to see what's going to happen next, but for today, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about these graphics cards and about this review. Don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and don't forget to watch the video about the new Zen 2 CPUs that's going to be released today as well. So. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye!